Hello and welcome to the March 2021 edition of our U.S. Executive Podcast. I'm Greg Dacko, Chief U.S. Economist at Oxford Economics, and I'm joined today by Kathy Bosantic, Chief U.S. Financial Economist. Yes, thank you, Greg. Happy to be with you. Um, so we had a, another um, week of, of pretty strong economic data, um, and, and that kind of sets us up, particularly that although the retail sales data was surprisingly uh, weak, although that was weather impacted. But where does that leave us in terms of our GDP outlook for Q1? But more importantly, where does it leave us for 2021? Well, we're quite optimistic about the outlook. Uh, we're we're actually um, really on top of of the consensus when it comes to uh, to our forecast for 2021. Um, and if anything, the consensus is moving in our direction. We're looking for growth around seven percent uh, for real GDP. We're looking for about seven million jobs to be added in the U.S. economy by year end. We're looking for an unemployment rate at 4.6% in the fourth quarter, um, and we're looking for gradually firming inflation over the coming months. But overall inflation, uh, core inflation, core PC inflation ending the year around 2.4%. So a fairly optimistic take on the outlook. It's going to be bumpy. It's not going to be a straight line uh, up through uh, 2021 because we'll see some ups and downs as fiscal stimulus ebbs and flows and as the health situation continues to gradually improve. And we should not be surprised by some um, you know, reversal like we saw earlier this week in terms of February retail sales. I think they tell us very little. They tell us that when people don't get as much fiscal stimulus, they tend to be a bit more careful with their outlays. It also tells us that when weather is bad, people tend to be a little bit more careful with their outlays. And we saw the same type of correction with industrial production. But overall, the trend remains quite favorable. And I think that that was highlighted, Kathy, in, in the, the Fed's uh, statement and the, the, their latest economic projections. Um, what should we remember from, from this uh, uh, meeting uh, this, uh, this last week in terms of, of the Fed policy direction going forward? You're right, Craig, and and the Fed is one of those entities that's catching up with us in terms of GDP forecast. So they pushed up this year's forecast to six and a half percent. But what's more um, eye-catching and maybe even more important because they have the dual mandate of full employment and inflation uh, running around two percent on average is the fact that they showed no change in the median interest rate dot plot estimates um, throughout 2023, so meaning no rate lift off or rate hikes, uh, even though the unemployment rate falls to three and a half percent and actually inflation remains a bit above two percent in 2023 after we get this pickup this year, just as we expect, then some easing as the base effects and the reopening impact fades, but they still have it rising a little bit. So it's a little bit um, maybe a little bit surprising that we didn't see an increase. But nevertheless, what the main takeaway is that the Fed wants to remain extremely dovish, even more than we thought. And they're willing to let the economy run hot to achieve these broad based inclusive full employment. Um, And they don't think inflation is going to rise in a very significant or persistent way. In part, that's because inflation uh, inflation expectations are anchored, something we'll be writing about yeah. and publishing next week. Um, but they, they are sticking to their, their guns in terms of their new average inflation targeting framework, whereby they, they don't expect to raise um, interest rates uh, as long as inflation doesn't seem persistent and they reach their goals. So even though there were a couple of, of participants that had expectations of rate hikes, even starting in 2022, I think Powell made it clear that the core consensus is really seeing rates staying low, even if inflation is is slightly above two uh, percent in the near term. Yeah, that, that's right. He actually kind of downplayed those um, spurious dots that moved, <laughs> shifted slightly <laughs> higher, and said, "Well, like the bulk of the consensus, which really yeah. matters, you know, we see no rate increase." So I, I think he was also, um, you know, trying to set the stage and keep. Um, the fact they're going to be very accommodative, but keep this economy rolling. Um, Mm -hmm. But, you know, what's also going to be quite interesting in the mix is as we get to June and then beyond that, what happens if we get another fiscal package, right? You know, build back, uh, build um, America back better um, and and we get infrastructure um, spending that comes aboard. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a potential significant lift to the economy. I think, you know, in general, uh, risks are, are, are increasingly tilted to the upside in terms of economic activity. Uh, we have seen the combination of the COVID relief package that was passed at the end of last year and the American Rescue Plan uh, combined are, are worth about $2.8 trillion. 
adding a fiscal impulse this year of about four and a half percentage points. So that's massive. But then on the back of that, there's the Build Back Better plan. Uh, we're getting lost in all these acronyms, but uh, that mm-hmm. that is it worth potentially another two trillion of of infrastructure spending with some offsets on with taxes on higher income uh, families, as well as some reversal of the the corporate tax cuts from the the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017. Um, but in general, we've calculated that that could add another zero five zero six percentage points uh, boost to growth next year um, and. Pr- permanently lift the level of GDP because that's it's really an infrastructure supply side type of, of stimulus uh, package. And, you know, it, it, to some extent, we, we started to see uh, markets price in some of that stronger, longer lasting type of growth environment with real yields rising, inflation expectations also rising. Um, do you think that's a concern for, for Powell and the Fed um, in terms of, of, of this preemptive uh, tightening from, from financial markets? Well, overall, financial conditions uh, remain very accommodative, which I, I know you will actually be writing about. Um, so that's really what Powell takes a look at. And when that well, that means corporate bond spreads, the dollar, um, swap spreads, um, volatility in the equity and, and the bond market. But you're right, long-term interest rates have moved up. And, and in a way, you can look at that as endogenous tightening so that it's sort of doing some of the work for the Fed, even though the Fed doesn't want things to get very tight. But by having that natural break, mortgage interest rates rise, even along the the middle part of the curve, five-year treasury note yields have risen. That car loan um, rates are linked to that uh, Mm -hmm. most directly. So that means you kind of cool things down. So for those who are waiting, you know, worried that we're going to overheat, now what the Fed has said is we want to run it hot. That's implicitly what they're saying. They don't want to overheat things. And for those who are worried about overheating, the gentle rise, well, maybe not so gentle, but the rise in, in long-term rates actually can help cool things down. But the key is not to have um, a disorderly market move. So where yields really jump up highly and then has an adverse impact on those other financial conditions and particularly the equity market. So they're watching. Um, they told us they're watching, although interestingly, Greg, as we joked, um, Powell did not want to utter the name of the other tools that are available, such as, you know, maturity extension program, that means buying um, more long dated uh, bonds um, or um, yield curve control. <laughs> he stopped short of that. So he doesn't want to fuel expectations of that, but sort of want to let them know we're, we're, we're aware. Um, we don't want things to tighten too much. Um, yeah, but he's, he's I, easing into this uh, this more secondary role for the Fed um, that uh, I think they've been looking for for the past decade, where, where fiscal policy plays a greater role, uh, but where monetary policy um, isn't the main element of, of stimulus to growth, nor nor constraint, where, where essentially a lot of the stimulus and the impulse is, is being driven on the fiscal side. Yeah, that's right. And I think the point you made earlier is really important that this uh, Build Back Better uh, plan um, that that could actually add to the supply side of the economy and have a long lasting impact, hopefully, if, if, if it's constructed well, of course, where we know this, you know, the, the American recovery plan, that that's really short term or rather mm-hmm. short term needed, but but rather short term. Yeah. And and I think, you know, just generally speaking, um, one of the, the, the key elements that, that we have to keep in mind is that there is an inherent tension between the Fed's new uh, reaction function, which is backward looking based on outcomes, not expectations, um, and forward looking markets. And so you're going to get this inherent tension between markets that are expecting stronger growth, hearing the Fed's willingness to tolerate higher inflation, and at the same time, the Fed's saying, well, yeah, that's our forecast, but let's see whether this is actually realized. And if it does realize, then we'll tell you so. I think that was one of the key words from Powell. We'll let you know when when we're thinking about QE or when we're even thinking about thinking (laughs) about QE. That's right. That was very, very true. Um, And he said, show me me the data, basically. Um, We're not going to be preemptive and act on our forecasts. And and that is a big change. And that, but that all of this fits into uh, the new policy framework. So we're we're just in a new world here with the Fed, and um, it'll be interesting, obviously, as we watch this as it unfolds. Uh, but I think the bottom line is uh, what's really key for the Fed in, in our analysis is um, that inflation expectations do stay anchored. If they start to become uh, unmoored in any sense, then then that would get the Fed a bit more concerned as well. Yes. A brave new world. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, 
Th thanks very much, Kathy. Uh, this was great as always. Um, and thank you all for listening. And we'll tune in again for the April 2021 Executive Podcast. Thank you very much. Thanks, Craig.